I figured I'd get a, put a few slides together just to introduce people to Ad ID. Um, so Ad ID, we are the center of a good advertising workflow. We also won an award for uh, the uh, vendor of the year from Media Magazine 2012. Just to quickly talk about you know, some of the things that have been said about Ad ID. You know, digital asset management is important. Changing the way that advertising happens, Ad ID is a key chain enabler. Clyde Smith of Fox Broadcasting said that if you can't identify it, you can't operationalize it or measure it. If you can't measure it, you can't monetize it. Kind of important stuff that we've got to think about. So what is that ID? We are the industry standard for advertising. Just like the UPC code, ISBN, ISRC, we're a joint venture of the American Association of Ad Agencies, which you're in right now, and the Association of National Advertisers. We started in 2002. And as of the end of March of this year, we are required for any television or radio commercial that is using SAG after members. So, and we, ex we, we, we figure that somewhere between 70 and 90% of video commercials use SAG after members, and somewhere around a third of radio commercials use SAG after members. So, certainly a lot of space, stuff that's going to be required. As of the end of 2013, we're used by over 900 advertisers. And that actually is, over the past seven years, we've gone from less than 100 to close to 1,000. But we've certainly grown. So why does the advertising industry need a standard for identification and metadata? Well, if you take a look at this and you see the little leaves in red, those are the platforms that we had 10 or 15 years ago. It's quite simple. Then you start looking at the dark, the dark blue leaves that uh, talk about what we currently have in terms of media platforms. And then you've got plat future platforms that nobody's invented yet. And you've got to think about it that from an operation <coughs> standpoint, administration, measurement, residuals, all of these things need to be tracked and need to be tracked in a standard way. If you think about it, and I don't say this to a group of digital asset management people, but it would be as if the packaged goods industry didn't have a UPC code. Somebody would choose to do letters and numbers, special characters, emoticons, whatever they chose to do. Same thing in advertising. Considering the explosion in choices in the, the consumption of media, having a unique identifier and descriptive metadata makes a lot of sense. So think about the marketing supply chain today where we still very much do things in silos. You know, it's sort of digital asset management is not at the center Digital asset management just sort of lives probably in a few of these silos and probably is not connected to each other. So just to give you a little bit of background, why SAG-AFTRA decided to mandate Ad ID, looking at accuracy. From a measurement standpoint, the Coalition for Innovation and Media Measurement stood up and said, if you have unique identification, you reduce friction and gain accountability. Surprise, surprise. So inside of this group, we can understand that before you do anything, you need to actually register. There has, something has to be in a centralized database. So the three steps start with registration. Then we get into oper operationalizing. And the operationalizing is real, really where most of you live in digital asset management, embedded metadata. And then you get to the point of being able to say, if I can then have unique identification and description, I can actually embed it in measurement and reporting. So standardized add slate metadata. And so you'll hear the term slate a lot in the advertising space. And the slate is really the descriptive information about an ad. And I just happened to pull the, the slate metadata for this banner ad that you see so from the Ad Council. Um, it really, you know, it's, I, it's basically an advertiser name, product name, brand name, title. And you would be, you'd be surprised the number of different ways that people describe advertising. So this is the Ad ID, the Ad ID slate. I tend to call the work that we do is the center of the toolkit for interoperability in the advertising industry. Ad ID works closely with engineering organizations, advocacy organizations, trade organizations, in video, audio, magazine media, internet. And we talk about industry interoperability all the way from the pre-production of an ad all the way to its measurement and digital asset management. We also work very closely with a, a standard called XMP. I'm assuming everybody here has heard of XMP. Anybody here who hasn't? Okay. So XMP is an embedded metadata mechanism. 
And XMP is supported by a variety of file formats that are commonly used in the advertising space. And from an advertising perspective, the only formats that are not supported are MPEG-2 and MXF. And MXF has their own embedded metadata mechanism, so it doesn't necessarily need XMP. So I want to take just a minute to talk a little bit about what AdID has done with XMP. I want to actually tempt fate here and do a live demo. So everybody here is familiar with Adobe Bridge? Okay, inside of Adobe Bridge, is a capability to uh, embed XMP metadata. So we, in, uh, and I'm just going to cheat here so that I can do this demo quickly. So here's a PDF file. And if I just go right click on it, go on to File Info, and you can see, I don't know if people are familiar with the XM, various XMP panels inside of the Adobe products. We built an interactive XMP panel. It's probably one of the first interactive XMP panels using web services, actually using authenticated web services. So if I just, you know, I, originally, I just a minute ago copied an ad ID number, and so I've just pasted that into that field, import the slate metadata, and it shows that it's got my username and password remembered, and there comes up the metadata. So again, this has done a live call to the ad ID system, so a live uh, so uh, RESTful API call into Ad ID, and if I just click OK there, you can see in the metadata window that that information is embedded inside, and any product that reads XMP can actually read this metadata. So most of your DAM systems, most other automation systems can actually now read this. So the rekeying of metadata that happens somewhere between 20 and 30 times gets eliminated or at least gets reduced, you know, depending on where you are in workflow, you can actually eliminate or reduce the rekey. So that was my, my quick demo. Um, and just to show you quickly, so what ad ID is, so the first, on, on the far, far side you see ad ID's web interface, so that's our ad ID system. You saw the flash panel and you saw the XML panel, and again the metadata flows from one to another. So in general, advertisers or their agencies actually are the ones keying that information in. Ad ID, most of what you see here, so if you look at the parent company of the advertiser, the advertiser, the brand, they're all controlled vocabularies. So nobody is keying in anything other than maybe a title and uh, maybe, a, maybe a campaign name. All of the other things that are important, the advertiser name, the product name, the brand name, are all coming from standardized hierarchies that are coming from industry standards. So with that, uh, that's my general, my just quick introduction to ID. I have this question, I'm sure we'll we'll get to them afterwards.